Today, I'm here with product designer Stan at All Star Sporting Goods Products. How is 3D printing used in making baseball equipment? Yeah, we use 3D printing all the time. We started back in, in 2005 with helmets. And what we would do is we would design a helmet, we'd go from our sketches, we start building those sketches into a 3D model on a computer screen. As you can imagine, you're designing a product on a screen and it looks good, you can take measurements on the screen, but until you really have it and you put foam into it, you really don't know if it's gonna fit the right way. And so the problem was, back before 3D printing, we would commit to a mold. A mold takes about three months to make for a finished product. And once it's made, you really can't change it significantly. So if it's too tight or too wide, you're stuck with it. And it's also very expensive. And so sometimes you'd, you'd invest in this mold and be like, oh, we just wasted all this money. It doesn't work. So with 3D printing, we could print a whole catcher's helmet like this, and then we can, we can load it up with foam and then put it on people's heads and see if it fits. And if it's a little bit tight, you know, maybe side to side, we'll take the 3D model on the computer, make it wider, and then we'll print another, another version, put more foam in it, put on more people's heads, get that feedback. And if it, everything seems to fit right, then we know that we've, we're gonna have a great product when it comes out of the, the injection mold. We look at it on the screen, we take some measurements, and you know, we think we know what we're doing, and we, we think that it's a, it's a good design. So what we do to test it is we, we then basically print that exact shape on our 3D printer over here. How long does it usually take to um, 3D print a yeah. whole like, prototype? Yeah, so this takes uh, almost 20 wow. hours of just printing. It's, it's a very, very slow process where you can see up here there's a little bit of a circle. And so we basically printed it like this. And it just went ring by ring by ring all the way up. And then you can see that there's, uh, there's a bit of a honeycomb pattern here. So it's not a complete fill but it's strong enough that it allows us to do things such as drill holes into it so we can mount the metal hardware onto it. We can, we can glue in different foam pieces as well to check the fit, so it's, it's a phenomenal, uh, great tool for design. We have to print this one in halves just because it's so, so large, and we basically glue them together, and once we do that, we can start playing around with different foams. We can start to saying, hey, you know, is, this, is this gonna fit you know, someone the right way? Um, print different layers in, but as you can tell, it's, it's pretty messy. Yeah. But it gives us a really good sense that we're, we're on the right track. And so oftentimes after the first print, we realize, hey, we need to make it a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, and we, we adjust, and then we print a second, maybe a third prototype to, to get the fit perfect. Do you use like a certain ink when you're printing it? Yeah, well, it's different plastics. There's a spool that's basically, think of like a thick thread that's just this uh, plastic filament, and it comes into the head and gets melted, and just layer by layer, it squirts out this, this molten liquid plastic, and then it starts to, to basically cool and harden, and just layer by layer, you're building it up. Well, thank you so much. I learned a lot, and I had so much fun. Thanks so much, Amelia. Thank you. For Ness and Clubhouse, I'm Amelia.